Police to launch investigation into Indonesia flag area. Two more arrested over Bukit Aman's detective's murder. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Mazait Hamidi has expressed that the mistake of the upside-down image of the Republic of Indonesia's flag, which was published in souvenir books for the SEA Games, was not done intentionally. The Deputy Premier had asked for all quarters to have an open mind on the matter and not jump into any conclusions whatsoever. Uh, it was not kita harus uh, berfikiran terbuka dalam kali ini dan uh, saya tidak fikir izinnya dilakukan dengan niat. Met today after officiating Teluk Intan Amnu Delegates Conference, Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid complimented the organizers on a spectacular opening ceremony of the 29th Sea Games. Seen as a benchmark in organizing international sporting events in the country, he called on all Malaysians to support the local athletes during the tournament. In a related development, Special Branch Director Datuk Sri Muhammad Fuzi Harun said police will conduct a thorough investigation and take appropriate action despite the Malaysian Sea Games Organising Committee or MASOC had issued an apology on the technical error. Mengambil tindakan yang sewajarnya kerana apa ni, kita tak mahu uh, pihak Indonesia berasa berkecik hati lah dengan insiden yang yang kita tak tunjukkan ke belakang tersebut. Met today in Johor Bahru, he said police have not received an official complaint on the matter from the Indonesians. Now, two more suspects in the Bukit Aman's D7 detective's murder were remanded for seven days today by the Jitra Magistrates Court. The suspects, aged between 30 and 36 years old, surrendered themselves at the Jitra police station yesterday when the police revealed their identities to the public. Deputy Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Norashi Ibrahim did not rule out the possibility that more suspects will be arrested in the near future. Kita akan tengok sebab itu kita tahan ketiga-tiga suspek ini untuk soal sesat dan kita nak tahu apa sebenarnya punca punca kejadian ini dan apabila kita dapati punca ini kita nak tahu siapa lagi yang terlibat. So di peringkat ini memadai lah saya kata hanya tiga orang kita tahan untuk sesatan lanjut dan ada kemungkinan ada beberapa orang lagi yang akan ditahan. Sub-Inspector Abu Hashim Ismail, 54, who was in the midst of gathering information on the underworld and smuggling activities at the Malaysia Thai border, was gunned down at a house in Taman Sri Hospa, Changlong, on Friday night. The case is being investigated under Section 302 of the Penal Code for murder, which carries the death penalty upon conviction. In a related development, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Mazahid Hamidi has confirmed that the Bukit Aman's D7 detective was gunned down by a suspected foreign contract killer. He added that the detective's murder was connected to the case he was investigating at the time. The information on the case is also being updated with the Mutual Legal Assistance, MLA, to share intelligence in order to identify the suspect. Walaupun mungkin ada penembak upahan, kepada negara di luar Malaysia ini tetapi dengan kerjasama MLA Mutual Legal Assistance dan juga kerjasama perkongsian maklumat intelligence kita akan mencari hingga kita memperolehi dan menangkap serta membawa ke mahkamah Speaking in Telo Intan today, Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid added, despite the various risks, PDRM's spirit remains resolute to combat and reduce the nation's crime rate. 
Now, Joe, police toppled a drug trafficking syndicate when a man was arrested with various drugs worth about 630,950 ringgit in a raid on an entertainment outlet in Johor Bahru early yesterday morning. Now, police also seized one bottle containing five liters of mangosteen flavored ecstasy liquid poured into small containers meant for sale between 130 and 150 ringgit. State Narcotics Criminal Investigation Department Chief ACP Lucas Aket said the 40-year-old man was believed to be an employee of the entertainment outlet arrested during a raid at about 2.30 a.m. yesterday. Met today, he said other drugs seized include ketamine, ecstasy, aramine 5, among other assortment of drugs. He said the drugs were believed to be supplied to about 20,000 users and distributed in entertainment outlets around the city. The suspect has been remanded and investigated under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952, punishable with the mandatory death sentence upon conviction. Today, the Putrajaya Magistrates Court released former Felder Chairman Tan Sri Muhammad Isa Abdul Samad after a five-day remand from Wednesday over a Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission investigation into the Felder Investment Corporation, or FIC, purchase of a hotel in Kensington, London. The Registrar of Subordinate Court of Malaya, Datuk Zain Abidin Kamaruddin, who led proceedings, allowed the release of Tan Sri Muhammad Isa, 68, on bail of 150,000 ringgit in two sureties. Tan Sri Muhammad Isa was seen entering the court around 9.50 a.m. and left around 10.45 a.m. Upon leaving, he was greeted by cheers from over a hundred of his supporters and family members, including his wife, Kwan Sri Bibi Sharliza Muhammad Khalid, who had been waiting for Tan Sri Muhammad Isa at the court compound since 9 a.m. Dato K. Kumarindran, who leads the team of lawyers representing Tan Sri Muhammad Isa, says the MACC did not request for a remand extension period following his client's full cooperation in the investigation. The Ministry of Education created the label Hotspot Schools to ensure that schools listed under this category will work towards raising their school's disciplinary reputation on top of their academic and co-curriculum achievements. Now, speaking in Ipoh today, its Minister Dr. Sri Mazi Khalid said there are certain criteria which each school has to meet before they are listed under specific categories. Masuk dalam kategori itu tak perlu susah hati. Sekolah, pengetua, guru-guru dan sekolah sendiri, parents, PIBG, alumni sekolah boleh improve apa yang boleh buktikan untuk improve apa yang uh, telah ditunjukkan dalam rekod itu oleh 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 uh, sinarai jatang kuasa itu. Jadi sekiranya ada dalam sinarai jatang kuasa itu bukan bermakna sekolah itu seluruh sekolah itu tak ada disiplin, bukan makna seluruh sekolah itu ada masalah. Kita pergi kepada beberapa kriteria yang ada dalam dalam kategori itu. Now the goods and services tax or GST system that is currently being implemented will be improved to make it more efficient. Now according to Second Finance Minister Dr. Sri Johari Abdul Ghani, the main areas of concern are the enforcement aspects and identifying errant traders who avoid paying the GST. Kita kena buat penguatkuasaan yang begitu detail dari segi pembayaran GST. Kalau dia orang tak bayar, orang lain bayar, maknanya you create not level playing field. Jadi orang yang tak bayar, orang yang bayar, mana boleh? Jadi mana itu yang kita kena pastikan bahawa penguatkuasaan kita akan terlalu cepat. Dr. Sri Johari added the GST system will not only benefit the government but also ensure the implementation of development projects that benefits the people. A 16-year wait to win the SEA Games netball gold medal in emphatic fashion by defeating defending champion and arch-rival Singapore 65-41 to in a lopsided final at the Juara Stadium in Bukit Kiara today. Now the win also avenged their narrow defeat to Singapore at the 2015 Singapore SEA Games. Now coach Tracy Robinson's strategy to set a fast and furious pace right after the starting whistle seemed to have caught the causeway rivals off guard as Malaysia took a commanding lead in the first and second quarters. Now Juara Stadium was filled to the brim since tickets for netball competition had been sold out long before the SEA Games competition had started. Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Razak, who later presented the prizes to the winners, commended the players for their commitment 
and ability to overcome Singapore, who were the defending champion. And for more on today's Sea Games, we take you live to the International Trade and Exhibition Center on MyTech in Kuala Lumpur with Amin Carlos. Carlos, it's over to you. Thank you, Jessica. The Sultan of Trungano, Sultan Mizan Zainal Abidin, who created history by being the first Sultan to participate in the Sea Games, pulled off a royal feat today by scoring two gold medals in the endurance event held at the Trungano International Endurance Park. Now, the two gold medals were from the individual endurance event and the team endurance event. And 25 riders from five countries, namely Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore and Brunei, were flagged off at 3 a.m. today by the Raja Mudaf Trungano Tunku Muhammad Ismail Sultan Mizan. And Sultan Mizan, who mounted RTS anniversary, who also joined by Azizatul Asma Dato Abdullah, who won third place in the 120-kilometer World Championship Tournament in Uruguay back in 2013. Well, Azizatul is the only female national participant to join the event normally dominated by men. And the other four riders are Muhammad Fuad Hashim, Muhammad Bukhari Rosali, Muhammad Adwa Ambong, and Muhammad Yusran Yusuf, who are all from the East Coast teams. Tahniah kepada pasukan Malaysia kepada uh, Cik Mak Din sebagai pengurus pasukan uh, Malaysia dan juga penunggang rider-rider uh, apa groom, crew dan juga mana-mana pihak yang terlibat dengan uh, menjayakan eh? uh, assistant bed, uh, bed dengan assistant bed uh, the farrier all the team members lah yang yang telah uh, uh, bertukus rumus uh, uh, untuk memberi kejayaan kepada pasukan Malaysia ni lah. Well, meanwhile, another 18 participants comprise of six riders from each country, Cambodia, Thailand and Singapore. Yep, Wai Kin upstage his more illustrious teammate, Wong Wing Sun, to deliver the first goal for Malaysia in the SEA Games Wushu competition in the Kuala Lumpur Convention Center or KLCC. Now, Yep pipped Wong, who is from the podium program, to win the men's Jianju or sword event after scoring 9.67 points. And Wong, the 2016 Asian Championship and World Cup gold medalist in this event, had performed much earlier and was holding the lead at 9.65 points. But it was only, or would like to say it only lasted until 24-year-old Yep, who is from the Kita Juara program, who appeared on court. And Singapore's Jinji Fung took bronze with 9.48 points. And it is the first goal for Penang born, yep, in four SEA Games appearances. And, of course, he was delighted to have finally got his act right. And yep, won two silver medals at the 2013 World Wushu Championships in Kuala Lumpur. And Malaysia also bagged two silvers through Lo Yin Ting and Pu A Yin. And well, Poon settled for silver from the second straight SEA Games with 9.63 points. Well, apart from Housing International Broadcast Center, IBC for the KLC Games, the newly built Malaysian International Trade and Exhibition Center, or MyTech, is hosting eight events as well. And MyTech is the second largest sporting hub for the event and is the first component of NASA TTDI Sandir and Burhad's 20 billion ringgit Kel Metropolis Development Project. Mohana Priya will tell us more about the various events being held here at MyTech. The sports which are being contested here for the SEA Games are artistic gymnastics and gymrama, fencing, table tennis, volleyball, weightlifting, indoor hockey, Muay Thai and boxing. Now besides SEA Games, seven sports would also be contested at the same venue for the 2017 Para ASEAN Games. Botia, chess, goalball, table tennis, powerlifting, sitting volleyball and wheelchair basketball. In table tennis, the mixed doubles category earlier today saw Malaysian pair Mohamed Shakirin and Ng Sok Kim lose in the quarterfinals to the Thai pair. 3-0, 1-11, 7-11 and 6-1. Now in the first round, the Malaysian duo defeated So Min Woo and Tin Tin Kaing from Myanmar 3-0 with 11-7, 11-6 and 11-5. Now another Malaysian uh, national pair, Mohamed Ashraf Hail Mohamed Rizal and Lee Ru Yu lost to Vietnam's Din Huang Lin and Mai Huang Mai Trang 1-3 with 9-11, 6-11, 11-9 
10 11. Now with me right now is the team manager for the Malaysian table tennis squad, Mr. T. Lipsin. Uh, Mr. T, what is the morale right now and what do you think the expectations are for the next few events that Malaysia will be taking part? Um, I'm still very positive about our team because we have a good preparation in China before this uh, uh, SEA game. So we still stick to our um, initial target, uh, three bronze. I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident we will get there. Lah. That's, that's brilliant. Um, what, are the, what is the morale right, right now for the team and yourself? I mean, we had a loss today, but, and today is the first day of the tournament, right? Yeah, um, players are still very confident because um, maybe it's the first game, you know, uh, still not that hot yet. So I'm, I'm quite confident they were used to it. Um, they, thought they will play better. Yeah. So the preparations were in China. So the training for the next few days is going on here in this venue. Um, what do you think about the venue and the facilities here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good venue, fantastic. You know, it's a good preparation for this game. We wish you all your best, all the best, sir, for the next few matches. And that was Mr. T. Lipsin. Um, we wish uh, the Malaysian table tennis team all the best for the next few days. And with that, I'm Mona Priya signing off for News on 2. Well, despite losing to Singapore, the Malaysian water polo team ended a 12-year wait for a medal after they finished third in the round-robin event. Well, Singapore led 2-0 in the first quarter, and despite a spirited fight back by our young players, Singapore's Lo Gigi still managed to sneak in another goal for our southern neighbours to lead 3-1. But the Singaporeans were relentless in their attack and added another three goals to lead 6-1 at the halfway mark. Now, Singapore went on to control the proceedings, and there was no way back for Malaysia as the game ended 17-4. So it's a bronze for Malaysia as Singapore continued its dominance in water polo. And Silva went to Indonesia. Well, Malaysia has apologized to Indonesia for an unintentional mistake in printing the Indonesian flag upside down in a souvenir guidebook for the 2017 KLC Games. Youth and Sports Minister Kairi Jamaluddin has met his Indonesian counterpart, Imam Nahrawi, to personally apologize. And after a brief private meeting today, the two ministers shook hands at a news conference. And speaking to the media later, Kyrie said the guidebook will be corrected and reprinted at the soonest. Menteri uh, Luar uh, Indonesia telah pun berhubung dengan Menteri Luar Negeri Malaysia, Datuk Sri Alif Ahmad. Dan saya telah menerima panggilan daripada Datuk Sri Alif Ahmad tadi. Dan uh, Datuk Sri Alif Ahmad telah memaklumkan bahawa satu permohonan maaf rasmi akan dikeluarkan oleh kerajaan Malaysia melalui Kementerian Luar Negeri Malaysia uh, kepada Kementerian Luar Republik Indonesia. Well, Kyrie further explained that Malaysia had submitted a written and verbal apology to Indonesia to convey its regret over the incident and adding that he hoped the good relations between both countries will not be affected following the incident. And that's all that we have for you today from MyTech, from the small crew here. It's back to you, Jessica. Thank you very much for that report, Carlos. And that concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, police to launch investigation into Indonesia flag era. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jessica Lee, stay tuned to TV2, and good night.